Have some skirmishing going on here. Oh, looks like the paratroopers firing up, firing up and running in, totally ignoring everybody, ignoring the bunker. Are they going for the Nebelwerfer? Are they going to do it? Looks like they took one casualty on the way in here. They see the Nebelwerfer. What thing I do? Oh my God! It's a satchel charge. It's a satchel. retreat. Retreat! You just threw a satchel charge. Please, dear God, retreat! Oh, <laughs> that was a cool move. Uh, other than sacrificing the whole squad of paratroopers, I kind of like that move right there. <laughs> uh, that was pretty good. Okay, so props to the legacy for that. Although, come on, at least hit the T button. As soon as you throw that thing, get out of there. You know those guys are all going to die. Oh, well. So, uh, takes out the Nebelwerfer threat. That's pretty good. That thing was getting kind of annoying. It was pretty much the only threat to his uh, early game machine gun nests and whatnot. So, uh, looks like the close combat Volks now regaining fuel. Things are starting to look a little bit better. Uh, but it looks like he's going to have some trouble as soon as he tries to get up this hill here. This is a really tough, toughly defended position. But there's plenty of ways to get into this central area here. There's all these little side passages that you could always flank a machine gun. But it looks like the, f the best way to find out if there's a machine gun there is to walk up in a range and see what happens. Uh, luckily, the uh, American machine guns don't really suppress all that well. So if you can get out of there without getting stuck... And uh, they're still firing. Oh, takes out one guy, and look at that. The line of sight in this game is kind of funny sometimes. You can see he's clearly just digging holes in the ground, but it's definitely enough to cause some casualties and suppress. Uh, sniper, on the other hand, is going to move on up. I would rather see the sniper just come up right here and start picking off from behind. That's a much more sneaky way to do it. Close combat folks now going in for the fuel point. And uh, it looks like, looks, like, uh, <laughs> looks like the Legacy was offering Tommy B some sort of odd truce or something like that. I'm not sure. Practice round? I don't know. Uh, but I think Tommy B wisely declines. Never, never really. I, I would never trust your opponent. Remember, you're you're in this game to kill each other. Fifty percent of all people who play these games lose all the time. You're always going. Someone's going to win. Someone's going to lose. That's the name of the game. Don't ever try to go for a truce. <laughs> That's just not advisable. You are inevitably going to be betrayed. So Greyhound armored car now on the field. Uh, that that is a real late game Greyhound armor car. No point whatsoever. I would never recommend getting a Greyhound this late in the game. It's true that he hasn't seen any um, any sort of anti-tank weapons, so this Greyhound can certainly do some damage. But I would, I honestly, in a normal game, I would say just get some anti-tank guns and and be well defended. Oh my God! But it looks like his whole base is wide, wide open. I want to see some Panzerfaust right now, Volksrangers. Remember, you can do damage. Get behind this guy. Panzerfaust right in the rear armor. Uh, this thing is just going nuts. I want to take a look at the Legacy right now. The Legacy has a ton of munitions. Drop a single mine right here. Drop a Greyhound mine. It's one of the best moves you can do. Uh, it's really cheesy tactic, but I, I seriously think uh, he should definitely do that. Oh, and check it out. We have an accomplished Oswin Flak Panzer on the field by Tommy B. Accomplished Oswin Flak Panzer has no problem whatsoever chewing into a uh, Greyhound. You can tell that that armored skirt upgrade helps it a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, it's dead in the water. So please, please drop a Greyhound mine right now. I'm rooting for you. Drop a Greyhound mine. Blow the hell out of everybody all around you. No, it doesn't happen. He leaves him for dead. And now we have a single, uh, slightly beat up, uh, accomplished Oswin Flak Panzer on the field. Accomplished Oswin Flak Panzer has a bunch of abilities that say, like, adds 5% to the following traits. And it has a whole ton of those. And by the end of it all, it has 10% to pretty much every trait. Um, so it's just a really good Oswin. Uh, it looks like uh, the Lake Sea has taken his cue and is now getting an anti-tank gun on the field. Um, I'm a little bit surprised to see that he didn't opt to skip this motor pool completely and go for a tank. Uh, just going for a, a tank depot is often a much better choice because he has the option of calling in AT guns as an airborne commander, but uh, has the power of going for tier, tier 4. Uh, kind of tier 3 is a little weak in this situation. Uh, but uh, honestly, the anti-tank gun is fine. That's you know that's what he wants to use in order to take out an Ostwin. So uh, he's defending himself. Both players playing very defensively, not really kind of going for the win or anything like that. Um, we do have pulse combat pulse grenadiers once again flanking the machine gun. Oh, I love this! Get on in there, kill those gentlemen. Uh, level five pulse combat pulse grenadiers are just going to do fantastically well. Uh, you can see them just chewing away, chewing away, and then inevitably are going to try to cap a point. And it looks like we do have a mortar round landing on them. These are that's a vet two mortar team, right? Thirteen kills, one light vehicle kill. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, so close combat, folks. Now uh, looks like we got some propaganda leaflets falling over here. I do like they have a little German cross on them. Uh, propaganda active on these gentlemen. Oh, that is a horrific, horrific mortar shot. Mortar's really good in these close quarters uh, because it just does a lot of damage with. Uh, when it, if it happens to hit in a, in a close area like that. So uh, the Vet 2 Volkswagen is still pushing on out. 
I am shocked to see that this Ostwin hasn't done anything yet. Uh, that's a great, great advantage he has right now. Um, granted, there is an AT gun on the field now, finally, but he hasn't seen any yet, so there's no reason to believe it. Okay, now he's seen an AT gun because he knows uh, that they are taking pot shots at the full screen. There's kaboom! Look at that shot right there. So, a lot, a lot of crossfire going on right now. Luckily, there's no machine gun out there anymore, uh, so Tommy B's taking advantage of that. Looks like a Nebelwerfer. Nebelwerfer for trying to get an easy, easy kill on this anti-tank gun here. Uh, mortar still landing everywhere, and now I want to see these Volkswagen run up and engage this anti-tank gun. Uh, that is absolutely necessary. Let's take a look up here on the upper right. Accomplished Oswin Flakpanzer is just charging right along. You can see he's uh, doing a ton of damage to these airborne. Uh, airborne, I haven't yet seen them with recoilless rifles, so perhaps uh, the Legacy does not have the recoilless rifle capacity. I'm not sure why he hasn't, uh, if not for that. So uh, all of them dead. Again, always retreat. Always retreat your units. So much better than just losing them needlessly. So uh, Oswin Flakpans are kind of getting a nice little warm-up out there. Let's take a look around and see. Ooh, I want to see what else he's building here. Tommy B is now building a Panzer. All right. So Tommy B jumps right into the Tier 4 units, and now he has an advantage. So he could have had an advantage with Pumas and uh, opted to play defensively instead and uh, built up until he had time to have a Tier 4 advantage. Here. So uh, I think we're going to get to see that in action pretty soon. Uh, we do see some good retreating going on here with but a single gentleman left, uh, and everybody's getting nicely suppressed. There. Ooh. Notice these guys are pinned. Machine gun is facing the other direction. That means that uh, the Legacy activated his um, suppressing fire, which is an upgrade you have, an ability you get if you have upgraded Browning automatic rifles. I almost never see anybody use it. It's 40 munitions. Uh, it's kind of hard to use. It doesn't always work right away. Uh, but it looks like he's not going to be put off by that one way or the other. <coughs> and now we have a nice little armor position on the field here. Note, by the way, he has 16% health. He has the free armored skirt ability and the maximum speed upgrade by 20%. So um, I think he's aware that there's an anti-tank gun there. There are two anti-tank guns there. This is such a narrow map. Is he really going to try it? It looks like he might even try to flank. Ooh, we've got some mortar shots coming in here. These anti-tank guns are all pointing in the wrong direction. Uh, is he going to spread them out a little bit better? Yes, he is rotating them now. He knows that there are some uh, there are some deadly units out there, and it looks like it looks like Tommy B is going to go for it. Will the anti tank guns have it? Uh, if he has the munitions, really the legacy should be activating armor piercing rounds the second he gets in there. And wow, check it out—the combination of sniper and Oswin Flakpanzer takes out that first gun very deftly, and now he's outside of his range. And oh, it looks like a premature good game from the legacy. Uh, I think he really could have had that there. Uh, he had the right defenses, he grouped them up too much. This is another good reason not to group these kind of units up. Not only are they susceptible to Nebelwerfer, Nebelwerfer fire, but uh, the fact that uh, they're so clumped up, they kind of are both pointing in the same direction. One anti-tank gun up here, or one anti-tank gun down here, or just even backing one tank gun up to here. A lot of times you want to have one tank gun behind the other one, so that when people engage the first one, and the first one has to rotate, the second one can, can continue firing. So. Um, Looks like it was just kind of bad luck for him on that. Honestly, Tommy B did all of the right moves late game. Uh, I questioned some of his early game decisions. Oh, and the Knights cross holders. Oh, these guys are so tough. Vet 2 Knights cross holders. I want to see them kind of charging on out here. By the way, uh, special props to the Legacy. I like seeing the fact that at the end of the game, he's just kind of talking over with his opponent, asking him what he could have done better. Uh, really kind of just good manners there. Uh, you can see the Panzer moving on in for the kill. And... Uh, by the way, this replay was submitted to me by Tommy B, so thank you, Tommy B, for the replay submission. Once again, I'd like to just kind of plug the plug the general forums. Uh, if you guys want to stop by, drop by the companyofheroes.com forums and check out my thread there. I, I will put a link in the bottom uh, of the description of this video. But it's just a really handy way to just kind of give any sort of feedback, say hello, see what's going on, and uh, just kind of talk with other players. So. That's a kind of fun place to go. We're going to see what else happens here. Look at how tough these guys are. They step on one landmine, two landmines. Okay, two landmines is the proper amount of landmines in order to take out those guys. Oh, well. Uh, so Tommy B is saying earlier Greyhounds. Definitely earlier Greyhounds uh, would have helped him. Um, and, uh, uh, sorry, the Legacy is saying early Greyhounds. Sorry, Tommy B is saying that the <laughs> that Either way, early Greyhounds could have helped out the Legacy, and Tommy B is admitting that he did not have early anti-tank guns. So I think he made some pretty good calls with fuel there. Again, always be a little bit wary of opponents who kind of give up but stay in the game, because as you can see, not only has he built a single Sherman tank, but he is also uh, researching the Sherman tank upgun, which in increases its penetration and damage versus uh, uh, armored vehicles. Sniper just kind of capping away. Uh, close Combat Volks capping away. 
and uh, soon to be, well, it's just a two cap, honestly. He has completely left the top side of the map alone. So it looks like the fight is going to continue, so let's see what happens here. It looks like the Sherman tank comes just barreling out of the gates, and by the way, the Legacy did not upgrade the 50 caliber machine gun. I would have honestly done that, but, you know, because, I mean, it's kind of an all-in, so who cares if you waste 50. Uh, looks like we're taking some damage here, though. Uh, the Panzer is uh, Vet 1, and it has the free armor skirts upgrade, so it's doing a lot of damage. Uh, these accomplished Flak Panzers never really do a lot of damage to Shermans. They do a tiny little bit, but I uh, just kind of want to keep them out of there, or at least just kind of use them to kind of kind of clog up the works here. So it uh, looks like the Sherman is going for the kill. You can see uh, his <laughs> he's got the long barrel upgrade now moving on in. We'll see if there's going to be anything here or if that Panzer is going to have to retreat all the way back. And look at me calling good game just slightly early here because, of course, uh, we've got some shenanigans going on. So it uh, looks like the Sherman tank is just going to chill out here in this base, uh, taking no damage from any units whatsoever. Um, we'll have to see. Tommy B is slowly but surely reacting to it. Oh, my God, it's so hard to get around on this map. Look at him, I never see tanks driving through these little trenches down here. Uh, looks like that'll eventually lead up into his base. Uh, the Oswin really has no business there. Oswin instead is going to go and secure the top half of the map. I enjoy that. What else do we have here? Oh, this is the naval buffer. Um, so it looks like this long barrel Sherman is just going to try and take out a Panzer Command. Uh, again, I think he's just kind of stalling and maybe even being a little bit annoying. I think, I think the... The, the move that would win him the game is if he perfectly micro this Sherman and took out the Panzer and then hunted down the Osman. That was the pro move, uh, and that if there was going to be a comeback in this game, it would have begun something like that. Uh, however, just kind of charging this into the base, exposing your rear armor and getting shot by a bunch of uh, Panzer Treks and stuff. And a King Tiger! King Tiger comes on the field! Uh, that'll surely end this game if he ever sees it. And yes, that's the end of the game right now. So uh, congratulations to Tommy B once again. Check out my discussion thread, and uh, I'll see you guys later.